Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create it so when you increase the max health the progress bar size for the health bar will also increase as well. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So you can see in the bottom left of the screen we have our health bar and if I walk into one of these cubes we're going to pick something up which will increase our max health and it will also increase the size of the health bar as well as our max health increases. So this is what we make today, it's again another request, quite a cool idea and as well this will work if you have maybe an image which is bars, I will explain a little bit more how to update it for that as well, but I'm going to be going over the basics of how to increase the size and the max health of the player like so. And it doesn't have to be when picking something up, it can be in any case as well. So this is what we make today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want to do is obviously have your health and your health bar set up already. If you don't have that, I do have other videos going over it and I will explain it briefly now. So what I've got is in my character blueprints, I've simply got two float variables of health and max health. And on event begin play, I'm gonna be creating my HUD widget, which I'll show you in a second, setting a reference to it and adding it to the viewport here as well. And you want to make sure you do have a reference to it. And if you don't, what you can do is right click the return value and hit promote to variable and have it like that. I'm going to compile, save and close that. And then in the HUD as well, what I've got is all I've simply done is I've got a progress bar down here. So you can drag and drop a progress bar in, set it to the size and anchor you want and the color as well. And then I've simply, where it says percent, I've hit binding and create binding, I've gone to graph and in the event graph on event construct, I've set a reference to my character blueprint. And then in the binding, what I've got is the character reference and the health divided by the max health, connecting that in there. So we now have the progress bar working perfectly for our health. So again, that's just a quick overview if you don't have that set up already, but I imagine you do as you're on this video instead of one of my other ones going forward with this. So again, we can compile and save all that as what I'm gonna set up now is actually setting it so we can increase the size of the progress bar and the player's max health if you wanted to. So again, I'm going to be doing this in an object in which we can pick up, but you can do this wherever you want. So maybe it's when you kill an AI or when you do something else, you'll do the exact same code just wherever you want in whichever blueprint you want. But for it to be a pickup, what we're going to do is right click, go to blueprint class and create an actor. And I'm going to name this one max health up BP. You can name this whatever you like and then open it up straight away. And in here, I'm simply just going to add a cube component and also add a box collision. So this is how the player is going to pick it up. Then simply just going to walk into it. And so that's nice and simple and all we need for the purpose of this tutorial. So I think that's going to be good. I'm going to compile, save. And then what I'm going to do is right click on the box collision in the components list, add an event and add on component begin overlap. So again, the player simply just has to walk into this for them to pick it up. You can set this up in any way you want, so the player has to press E or anything like that. And again, I have different videos more specific to that, but this video is specifically for what the title says it is. So in my example, out of component begin overlap, we're going to come out of other actor and cast to our character, which for me is the third person character. And even if you're not doing it on begin overlap, you still want to start the code off with a cast to your character. So again, anything from here, so what you see on screen now, the cast onwards, you'll want to include in your code wherever you're doing this. Obviously the object would be get player character if you're doing it a different way to this. And to start with, let's increase the max health if you wanted to do that. So as third person character, I'm going to get max health and then I'm going to come out of this and get a float plus a float. I'm gonna increase it by let's say 20 each time. You can set this as to anything you want, but I'm gonna have it as 20. And as third person character, I will also set the max health again. You can also increase the actual health if you want as well. So it stays up, so you increase the health by 22, but I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm gonna just do the max health for the time being. And then after this, what we want to do is actually increase the size of the progress bar. So what we need to do is we need to increase the render scale and the render translation, because the translation is the position on screen. And when we increase the scale, it goes both left and right, not just left or right. So we need to also move it over to the right or left so it looks like it's staying in the same position. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so to do that, it's very simple. We can come out of as third person character once again, and we're going to get that widget reference, which I said we needed to make earlier. 
So for me, I called that get HUD ref there like so. And out of this, we need to get our progress bar. So we can come out of that and get progress bar or whatever you have it named as. I left the name as default. So for me is get progress bar underscore 78. And then out of this is how we're going to increase the size. So out of this, what I'm going to do first off is get the render transform. Transform obviously including position, scale, and rotation. So that is just render transform, get transform there. And we can right click on it and split the structure pin. So we have the translation, which is the position, and the scale, which is obviously the size. And those are the two which we want to be messing about with. So what we're going to do first is the scale. So we'll right click on the render transform scale and split the structure pin. So we have the X and Y. Coming out of the progress bar once again, we're now going to set render scale like so connecting that into the set health there like so and we're going to right click on the scale and split the structure pin like so so we can mess about with the x and y and what i'm going to do is have the y go straight in there because the y is up and down it's the height i want to change the length or the x and so what i'm also going to do is i do have the values which i want to mess about with but i'm going to open it up again to show you how to get those values so let's open up our widget here and if we select the progress bar what you can do is scroll down under transform and see we have translation and scale so what i'm going to do is increase it by 0.2 each time so if i go to 1.2 you see that's what it looks like you can also see that it's moved here so i had it set up for four blocks on either side so i also need to move it on the x by 30 to have it as four i think i had it as 28 actually so now it's in the same position again if I reset those like that. So that's what we need to do. We need to increase the size and move it on the position to keep it looking in the same place. You're gonna need to mess about those values to get them perfect for you if you're not doing the same ones as me, but that's how we're gonna get those values. I'm gonna compile, save that, and go back into my blueprint here. So again, the X, I'm increasing it by 0.2. So I come out the X and get a float plus a float, increasing it by 0.2 connecting that into the X there like so. And that will now increase the size of our progress bar perfectly for how we want. But again, that's then gonna move it on both sides so it will be off screen. So what we wanna do now is also set the translation or the position. That's just as simple. What we can do is come out of the translation here and what I'm gonna do is break vector 2D out here like so. Come back out of the progress bar again and this time set render translation as you can see at the bottom there connecting that in and again i'm going to right click and split the structure pin like so with once again the y going straight in there as i don't need to change that at all the x i figured out to be 28 for me but again set it to what you want so as a float plus a float increasing it by 28 connecting it into the translation x there so again i hope that makes sense for you you just need to increase it on the position to make sure that it works perfectly and still aligns how you want with the scale going up as well. So increasing it by more than 0.2 will also mean you'll need to move it more than 28 or less than 0.2 will be less than 28. You're just gonna have to find those values yourself because obviously I can't do each and every one for you. So it does come down to a bit of your own work as well. But that should work perfectly for us. So it's gonna increase the scale of it and then also move its position as well to keep up with that new scale so it's always in the same position on screen and as this is an object i'm picking up after this i'm going to do destroy actor you obviously don't need to do that if you don't want to but again this should now work perfectly for us so we can compile save and we can hit play to test this out obviously after putting some in our level like so so i'm just going to move that up here and then get a few more of these just to test it out like so and now let's hit play. You can see we have it on screen. If I walk into one, the max health has gone up and the progress bar has also increased in size as well, staying in the same position on screen. And we can do this as many times as we want, obviously getting bigger each time. So you might not want to have too many of these in the level, as obviously you don't want the player to have too big of a health bar. But again, this does work perfectly for how we want. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so we can increase the player's max health and as we do that, we're also increasing the progress bar size on screen as well and adjusting the position so it always stays in the same place on screen. So again, this works perfectly for what we wanted. 
And also, as I mentioned at the start, if you maybe have it as an image, so you have bars in each of these instead of just a block line, what you could probably do is just reset the image of the progress bar when you increase the size. So it increases by one bar, you change the image to also have an extra bar on there as well and increase the size so it fits perfectly to what you want dependent on your image size. All of those individual parameters you should know anyway if you are using those images because you'll have done it when first setting up that image. And I imagine creating the new images with the more bars shouldn't be too difficult for you either. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.